So let's talk about the vice president now speaking out tonight about the January about January 6th. And I, I just want to get your reaction. Watch and then we'll talk. Okay. As I said that day, January 6th was a dark day in the history of the United States Capitol. But thanks to the swift action of the Capitol Police and federal law enforcement, violence was quelled. The Capitol was secured. And that same day, we reconvened the Congress and did our duty under the Constitution and the laws of the United States. You know, President Trump and I have spoken many times since we left office. And I don't know if we'll ever see eye to eye on that day. So he says that he might, he might never see eye to eye with Trump on January 6th. What's your take on this, George? Well, well, that's certainly true. They're never going to see eye to eye. Pence upheld the Constitution and Trump was ready to discard it. And that's just remarkable how Pence can just say, oh, we, we're having, we, never, we won't see eye to eye about that. This is the most fundamental thing you could possibly disagree about if you are a public official of the federal government, and particularly the two highest elected officials in the United States of America. We won't see eye to eye. One is talking about overthrowing the Constitution. One was trying to overthrow the Constitution by encouraging people to march up to Capitol Hill so they could stop the counting of the electoral votes. The other man, he, to his credit, upheld the Constitution and did his constitutional duty. It's just it, to say they, they don't see eye to eye on it, like it's, oh, it's just another disagreement about policy is just a kind of a remarkable, remarkable understatement, if you will, of, of what happened there. Yeah. We don't see eye to eye on the mob that you incited to come and who wanted to kill me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, yeah that's, exactly. You know, hang Mike Pence where they were chowning. It, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, it's just incredible to watch. But, you know, Pence deserves credit for doing, under enormous pressure, doing the right thing that day. Mm -hmm. um, he, he did the right thing, and he deserves credit for that. Let's talk about this reporting. This is uh, the National Review. Uh, Charles Cook is backing up Maggie Haberman of The New York Times, her reporting, saying that the former president really believes that he's going to be reinstated, and then he adds that conservatives should not brush this off. Let me quote here. Such temptation should be assiduously avoided. We are not talking here about a fringe figure within the Republican tent, but about a man who hopes to make support for his outlandish claims a litmus test of sorts as he decides whom to endorse for state and federal contests in 2022 and 2024. But, George, most Republicans aren't standing up to Trump, even though some at least seem legitimately alarmed. What's going on? I, I, they're just afraid of Trump, and they're afraid of Trump, and they're afraid of his supporters, the large percentage of Republicans who have been deceived by Trump or willing, willingly deceived, frankly. And they, are, they basically fear this man who cost them the presidency, cost them the House of Representatives in 2018, and cost them the Senate in 2021. And, you know, he's nuts. He's absolutely crackers. I mean, for him to be going around saying that he's going to be restated, re reinstated in August, I mean, that's, that's cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. Okay, George, let me ask and you. And yet they yeah. are terrified of him. The, a better question, because as, as my question came out, I said a better question is how seriously should we take this? Because, listen, I walked to the barbershop today in New York City, and there were people who were talking to each other on the street. And... But I'm not putting them on television. I'm not exploiting them by putting them on television and reporting about it. I mean, you said cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. How seriously should we be taking the rantings of someone who is obviously not dealing with reality? Both not seriously and seriously for on, mm. on two different levels. Not seriously in the sense that it's not going to happen. It's There is no mechanism by which it could possibly happen. Seriously in the sense that there are people out there who... Um, are, are actually peddling this. I mean, there's a whole conservative ecosystem that's developed of disinformation that was, you know, that was hypercharged by the former president. And he's getting this from somewhere. And we heard some of it from, uh, from the, the crazy lawyer, uh, 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 what's her name? The, Sidney Powell. The, the, the lawyer who, uh, Sidney Powell. And we heard this bizarre statement over the weekend by Michael Flynn. And 
no, th this this stuff is out there. There are people who actually may believe this. And, you know, you've seen the, the polls about, um, you know, some significant percentage of Republicans, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent believing in QAnon. This is of the same thing. And, you know, he's a former president of the United States. He hasn't uttered this publicly, but his people haven't denied that he's been talking about this with people. And the fact that, that he hasn't, that hasn't been denied tells you that there's something to the fact that he is having these conversations, which is yeah. absolutely insane. Um, so on one level, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it's completely nuts. On another level, the fact that enough people might be willing to believe are willing to believe the big lie of 2020 that the election was stolen and might be, you know, and believe that somehow Donald Trump should be restored to his proper place in the presidency. I mean, yeah. you know, we saw the violence on January 6th. It could be violence again. Uh, let's talk about, when I said people on the street, I mean people who were like talking to themselves on the street. I don't exploit them by putting on television, but I would like to offer them help saying that, you know, there's the people who have issues. Donald Trump <laughs> obviously has an issue because he actually right. thinks that he's going to be president of the United issue. States. L listen, uh, George, let's talk about why uh, the main reason we have here, and this is out your new opinion piece for the Washington Post. It says that the Senate GOP uh, had no excuse to block this January 6th commission, and you're right. Four years of Trump have led the Republican Party uh, becoming to becoming a threat to democracy, a declining sect dominated by crackpots, charlatans, and cowards. Of these, it is the cowards, including the senators who killed last week's legislation, who bear the most blame. So what is the way forward? How do you negotiate with these people who are not acting in good faith and even in, not in reality as well? Honestly, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you would have thought that after the January 6th insurrection, they would finally have been done with Donald Trump. And it, and it almost seemed like they were. And even after they acquitted him in the second impeachment trial, you had Mitch McConnell immediately going to the floor of the Senate and talking about what a terrible thing Trump did that day, that he was, he had, he was derelict in his duties and that he was gleefully watching the violence on television. And you thought maybe they were turning a corner, even though they refused to convict Trump on the, I think, the, uh, the, the meritless theory that you can't convict a former president and bar him from holding future office. But at least there was some basis to believe that maybe they had turned the corner on him. And now they, they don't want to even talk about it. This didn't, this vote last week didn't ask them to do anything other than let somebody else look into the facts. And they're so terrified that more facts will come out about what Donald Trump was doing all day in the Oval Office while he was watching TV and the violence was, was up on the Hill. They're so afraid of being tarred by that. And they have a, they have a reason to be afraid of being tarred by because they let this guy stay in office by not removing him the first time. And they let him go the second time. And they're, ref they're refusing uh, to basically speak out about the big lie now. 